All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create shortcuts in Android Studio and also how to create pinned shortcuts. So let me just show you what I mean. So the first thing I want to show you is that when we long click on shortcuts, you, we will have these two shortcuts and we can type, uh, we can click on messages and it will take us to our messaging activity. And then let's go back. And as you can see, we still had the full stack of activities there. So when we clicked back, we went to our main activity. And then you'll see we also have two buttons to add shortcuts. So if we tap on add YouTube shortcut, it will give us this dialog box that tells us to hold on the icon to be able to place it. And you can place it anywhere you want in your home screen. And then when we click on it, it will open the specified uh, action. So I just added an intent that took me to my YouTube page and you can add whatever you want. You can even make it so the user can add a specified URL and then they will go to that specified place. And the final thing I want to show you is that of course you can also create these pin shortcuts just by dragging from this info box. So let's just hold on messages and drag it next to our shortcuts. So this time when we click on it, it will bring us to the messaging activity. And that's going to be what we will be doing in this video. And the first thing we want to do here is create a new activity. So we will right click on this folder, go to new, click on activity and make an empty activity. And we're just gonna name this messages and click on finish. And once it has finished generating our activity, we can go to our res folder and we can customize these activities. So we'll go to our messaging activity. And the only thing I'm gonna do in here is add a text view that tells it that it is a messaging activity. And you can decorate this however you like, but this is not really important. It's just to show you that this is the messaging activity. Then we will go to our activity main XML and we are going to do something very similar to our messaging, except this time I'm going to add two buttons so we can also add some pinned shortcuts. So as you can see at the top, I changed it to a relative layout and then I added a text view with the ID of TV underscore main, just so I could place these right under. And Button one will have the ID of button underscore YouTube underscore SC, which stands for shortcuts. And the second button will have an ID of button underscore messages underscore SC. And you can customize that however you like, but uh, we will just move on with this tutorial. So let's go to, so the next thing we're going to do is go to our drawable file and we're going to create two icons. So go new vector assets. And the first one I'm going to look for is the public symbol because it reminds me of the internet and click on okay. Then let's change this to a funky color. This time we can go to red and click next and finish. And then let's create one more for the messages. So we'll go to vector assets. And this time we will type in message and that is perfect, very fast. Otherwise actually let's change this to a different color such as orange and click next and finish. So now we have our two icons which we will be using to show what our pin shortcuts are going to do. And after that, we have to go ahead to our shortcuts folder and create a new object. So we'll go to Kotlin file.class and type in object. And this one will be named shortcuts. And right above this object, we are going to create two constant values. And these are going to be IDs. So it's going to be shortcuts underscore website underscore ID. And that's going to equal a string that says ID website. And right below that, another constant value. This time it's going to be shortcut messages ID. And that's going to equal ID underscore messages. And then inside this object, we're gonna create only one function and this is going to be called function setup, which is going to take a context as a parameter. So inside here, we're gonna type in value shortcut manager and that's going to equal get system service of type shortcut manager and let's import get system service and fix that and import that and then it's going to take the context as the context and it's going to also take the shortcut manager class java that's already there for us this class requires us to have api level 25 so we're just going to add that annotation but since it's going to ask us to use this annotation later we're just going to put it outside of the object so that everything inside here will require the API level 25 to work. Then right after that, we can create our first shortcut and that's gonna be value shortcut is going to equal shortcut info dot builder. It's gonna take the context as the context and it's gonna take an ID, which is going to be our shortcut website ID. And let's make this nicer just by typing shortcut website so we know what it does later. Then we have to set a label to it. So we'll do set label and we'll say set short label, which is going to be website. Then it wants us to set also a long label. And this one is going to be called open the website 
or whatever you want. Then let's set an icon so it looks good. And we're going to do icon dot create with resource and it will take our context and a drawable that we have created in our drawable folder. So we'll take the public symbol and that will take care of the website icon. Then we need to set an intent to tell it what it should do when we click on the shortcut. So we will create an intent inside here and we will import intent. And then we need to specify intent dot action view. And finally, we want it to pass a URI for us. So we will just paste in a URL and we will import URI. And finally, at the bottom, we can call dot build and that will create the first shortcut. Now to save time, of course, I'm going to copy and paste this and change a few values for our second shortcut. So this one will be shortcut messages. And instead of shortcut website ID, we're just going to change this to messages ID. Then we need to change this to messages and send a message. Then we should change our drawable to IC message. And finally, we should remove this dot set intent and change it to set intents. And since we don't have an array of intents yet, we should go right above this value and create it. So we're going to type in value intents, and that's going to equal an array of intents. So we'll just type in array of. And the first thing we'll type in here is intent. And this will take an intent dot action view where we will have the URI as null. And we will pass in the context. And then we will get our main activity class.java and insert it there. Then we can just copy this intent, add a comma and insert it again right under because all we have to do here is change main activity to the messages class. And what this array is going to do is it's going to start the main activity intent and then it's also going to start the messaging intent. So when the user opens the app and they click the back button, it will go to the main activity intent rather than just exiting the app. And that will look a lot nicer when the user actually tries to go through the navigation. And then we can just set this array of intents in here and that will take care of that. Then the final thing to do is to get our shortcut manager and guarantee that it is non-null. And then we have to type in dynamic shortcuts and it's going to equal a list of shortcut messages and shortcut website. And that's all we have to do inside this object. Then we can go straight to our main activity. And inside here, we need to create a check since it uses API level 25 and above. So we're going to type in if build.version.sdkint, but let's import build. If that is more than or equal to 25, we will get our shortcuts and pass in the application context. And that will call that object and it will set everything up for us. So all the shortcuts will be present in the program. And if you just want normal shortcuts, that's fine. That's all you need to do. We can click on play and you'll see that once it has compiled, we will have those shortcuts. Perfect. So it has now compiled. And as you can see, it won't let us do the pin shortcuts yet. But if we go ahead and search for this program, let's go ahead and type in shortcuts and drag it to our screen. You will see that once we hold it down, we will have the shortcuts available to us. And if we click on messages, it will take us to our messaging activity. And if we click back, it will take us to our main activity. And also if we click on the website, it will take me back to my YouTube page, just as it has previously done before. And that's great and all, but I also want to add some pin shortcuts because pin shortcuts look really neat. So let's go back to our project and let's add a little bit more code to our main activity, which will allow us to add those pin shortcuts. So the next thing we have to do is create another if statement. So I'm gonna take this block right here, control and copy and paste it down below. Then we need to change this to SDK version 28 and above because the pin feature requires 28 and above. So it is a rather recent feature that most new phones can run. But if you have a new phone, you definitely want this feature for your app. And inside here, we're just gonna type in shortcut pins. And that's a function that we have not created yet. So do not worry if you have an error. Then down below, we'll type in private function shortcut pins, and that will remove that error from up above. And we are going to set an on click listener. So button YouTube dot set on click listener. And the first thing we're going to write in here is value, and it's going to be shortcut manager, and that's going to be equal to get system service. And inside here, we will get our shortcut manager class dot Java. And it's going to give you an error because it wants you to use API level 25 and above, but we will ignore that for now. And we'll go ahead and type in if shortcut manager, which is non-null, is request pin shortcut supported. So this checks if your phone can actually run that, then we will do the following. But this time I believe we can add the annotation that tells us that we must use API level 28 and above to use this feature. So we will add that 
and that will be added to the top of our shortcut pins. And we have taken care of that in our on create, so nothing, so there's nothing left to worry about. And inside here, we need to type in value pin shortcut info, and that's going to equal a shortcut info dot builder. And let's import that. Then it's going to require that we pass in the application context and the ID of which shortcut we want to build. So for this example, since we're using the YouTube button, we will take the website ID, and then we need to create a call callback intent. So value pinned shortcut callback intent. And that's going to equal shortcut manager dot create shortcut result intent. And it's going to take our pin shortcut info as an argument. And as you can see here, we have an error and that's because I forgot to call dot built at the end of this. So that will take care of that line over there. The next thing we have to write is value success callback. And that's going to be a pending intent, which will get a broadcast and we will pass in the application context in there. And it also requires a request code, which we will just pass in zero and it will take our pinned shortcut callback intent. Let's put this line down because I can't see anything anymore. And finally, it will require that we set some flags, which we will set to zero. So this one above creates the callback and this one's going to notify us that it has been successfully pinned. And finally, we have to request the pin shortcut so that we can actually pin it. And if it is successful, it will be displayed. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So we'll type in shortcut manager dot request pin shortcut. It will take some pin shortcut info as the first argument. And as the second argument, we just have to call success callback dot intent sender. And that will take care of our first pin. But let's create another one. So we need to do it for our second button. So we'll do set on click listener for our button underscore messages shortcut. And inside here, of course, as you might have guessed it, we can copy all of this code and only change two things. The first one being the shortcut ID. So we need to change that to the messaging shortcut. So shortcut messages ID. And let's change the request code here to one. And it was easy as that to create another pin. And I'm sure you could simplify this by a lot, especially by just removing all of this code and creating one function that takes two parameters, one for the shortcut website ID and one that probably updates the request code. But for this video, I'm just going to keep it like this. But as soon as you've added that code, we should be ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and click on run app. And as soon as the app runs, we can go ahead and test it by tapping on add messages. And as you can see, it will tell us, do you want to add this to your home screen? You can either add it automatically or you can exit or you can hold on it and it will take you to your main screen and allow you to drop it in. Then as soon as we tap on this messaging shortcut, it will take us to our messages. And if we click on back, it will take us to our main activity. Then let's go ahead and add the YouTube shortcut and just put it right there. And finally, to demonstrate that if we long click here and long click here, we can also do it like that. So it's a very neat feature they've decided to add to Android. And I definitely recommend if you have an app that is up to date to include it because tech freaks always love to explore their phones and see what it can do. So if your phone can do this, they probably will love your app. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave a like. And with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.